need everybody in my room immediately. Okay, call them. Rolling to kill him. Uh, everybody's life is on the line. Yeah, I know, I know. Including yours, okay? quickly came to know that a hit was put out on us. I had no idea of the real risks we were actually getting ourselves into. Hi, I'm Ashton Bingham. And I'm Art Kulik. And together we are Trilogy Media. Trilogy Media is a production company and online vigilante group that chases down and exposes internet scammers. <laughs> Back in 2016, we had just opened our production company. Ashton came to me and said like, hey brother, I'm getting like absolutely slammed with all these scam calls. I eventually decided to answer one and maybe make a fun three minute video for my friends. Guy got so mad that he went on this crazy terrorist rant. Remember we banged, we banged your, uh, your tower, we banged your building, remember that? And the video ended up being massively viral, posted online, millions of views within the first 24 hours. And we started this new path of investigating, wasting scammer times. So we kept working, we kept making videos, and eventually things started to pay off. We only made content on something that everyone can agree on, which is that scammers suck. And we were shocked how many people getting scammed. We will proceed the refund. It's got 7,000. <laughs> oh my goodness. Tell me to refund this to you. Yes, yes, madam. Well, how do I do that? Your first go-to thought might be like, who the hell falls for this stuff? But reading the comments, you see, there are so many people that say, oh my God, I was scammed. My grandmother was scammed. My family member lost their life savings. But we started to really dig deep into how do these scammers receive the money? It's not just a prank phone call. It's a multi-billion organization. The first one we were ever involved in was called a refund scam, which was a robocall that came from a call center in India. Once they get access to that person's computer, they start manipulating their, their HTML and manipulating their screens, demanding money from them and, and basically holding their finances hostage. We started to learn that there are ties all around the world and it involves a lot of money mules that are actually receiving checks or large cash shipments coming from victims to then forward them along to the scammers in India. And they're receiving them sometimes at their, at their house, at their front door. I felt that we can do something about it. Somebody has to do something. I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Somewhere in that corner, all the way so we can start walking. Let's not waste time, let's just get away from the car. Right here, yeah. all right, ready guys? So, Florida. <laughs> Where do I start? A lot of times when we find mules, it's us pretending to be a victim and we wait for the scammers on the phone to tell us where to send the money. And whoever is that recipient is the money mule. We got a name and an address. Somebody named Jeffrey in Florida, ready to accept a box of cash from victim Ryan Benson. Now, Ryan Benson is not a real person. Ryan Benson is me. So we're like, why not just go knock on the door and be like, what a fuck? What are you doing? Why are you accepting $50,000 in a cash box? This time it was uh, three of us, me, Ashton, and Connor. So Art approaches the door and knocks, and I'm able to kind of stay to the side around the corner where the garage is so I can listen in. And a man named Jeffrey answers the door. Hey, looking for Jeffrey. Uh, it's delivery. Art asks him, who are you expecting a package from? And Jeffrey says, Ryan Benson. From Ryan Benson? Yeah, hey, Jeffrey. Ryan Benson. My name's Ryan Benson. Do you know what's inside this package? So, hold on. Now, there was a key moment here where we messed up. This guy invited us in the house. Are you right now? Come on in. You sure? And it was right at that moment when we crossed the threshold of his house that he saw Connor filming. I have one more guy with me here. No, I said you come in. All right. Yeah, turn that off. No worries. You can stay out. Yeah, you can stay out here. And then his personality switch completely. Close my door. Sure. I don't know if the guy keeps filming. I'm gonna fucking shoot him. Okay. If you don't fly, we carry guns. No, I understand. So you tell him right now, stop shooting. I'm gonna shoot him. The both of you. Okay. So you want to do that right now? Yeah. You I guess five so. seconds. In the back of my mind, I'm hoping he's not gonna notice why I'm wearing sunglasses in a, in a dark apartment. If Jeffrey spots this camera on Art's eyes, that's gonna be a really bad situation. Listen. I think for me, the scariest moment of the whole thing was when we were standing in his kitchen 
and he left the room to go upstairs. But in my mind, I'm thinking he could very easily come right back down with a gun in his hand and he would be then blocking the door from us. And it wasn't until Jeffrey thought he was no longer being recorded that more information started coming out. Back up, back up. And he started calling to India to his connection, trying to figure out how the heck we got his address. He was saying very physically threatening things to us and to the person on the phone. You know when I come up there, I'm gonna fucking have to hurt you, right? I'm gonna light you up. You already know I'm gonna light you up. Over time there, it became more clear to him that it wasn't our fault, that it was the guy on the phone's fault. Now, you got 30 minutes. 30 minutes to get me their name and address. I'm gonna end it. 30 fucking minutes. I'm not bullshit. My heart was pounding. It was it was terrifying. It was terrifying. John, sir, advisor. Please, absolutely. So at the end, he said, like, hey guys, since you guys brought so much heat and like I have neighbors who's watching me, we're gonna go outside and we're gonna all of us take a picture together. Like your delivery guy, you give me uh, this box. As soon as he got off the phone, he told us to leave. So we left. Good. <sighs> just don't ask questions, just keep walking, just keep walking. And Art was like, are you okay? And I'm like, I, yeah, I guess. I'm shitting my pants, but I'm fine. There was a moment there when I wasn't sure if we were gonna get out. I wasn't sure if he was gonna come down shooting. When we first started pursuing this scam baiting endeavor and making videos, I had no idea it was gonna lead to us confronting scammers in person, getting our lives threatened. We were going into this just to ask questions. We wanna learn how this works and who's responsible for it, especially when it comes to a money mule. They're just one little cog in this gigantic machine. We knew pretty early on that eventually there would be a trip to India in some capacity. We didn't know it was going to be as big or as dangerous as it ended up being. Oh my God. So they have notified everyone. Oh my and God. They have broke. If anyone sees them, shot them. Hey. hey. Essentially, we have a dozen undercover agents working in these call centers to gather intel. And the scammers in India have resources for each other to communicate and exchange information, exchange resources, and offer their services to each other. They are open, they don't, they are fearless. They're posting like we can do this type of work without any fear from their real IDs. And our insider in India is in a lot of these groups. It was literally like James Bond in real fucking life. We're going to India. In this video, we are targeting three separate call centers right in the heart of Kolkata. We're about to expose them and hand deliver them a few surprise gifts having a dozen undercover agents working in these call centers to gather intel and eventually bringing devices and pranking the shit out of these call centers. We have insiders and we have glitter bombs. We didn't know it was going to be as big or as dangerous as it ended up being. You're trying to knock on somebody else's door who's been successfully in criminal business for decades and you're trying to close that business or stop that business. So you're putting yourself in danger. <laughs> Need everybody in my room immediately. Okay, Connor. Get, get Connor and Sean, please. News came to us very early, five in the morning, four in the morning, and it was shocking for everybody. There is a lot of people in India, and obviously we stand out like a sore thumb, and we were spotted. And quickly came to know and find out that a hit was put out on us. We can't go outside. No, they're not joking. They were shot. They have fucking guns. We couldn't even leave the hotel. If you want to go home, we're going to book tickets the, the same second, the same minute, because it's not safe anymore. Messi is going to Ansh. We had several locals that were involved in our mission. One in particular was Messi. What do you mean, like going inside? He's going for the interview right now. For a job? Yeah. yeah. Everybody's life is on the line. Yeah, I know, I know. Including yours, okay? And um, team made decision to stay and fight it back and go until this mission over. They were just saying me, why are you taking this bag inside? I, I told them, just, I'm new. Either you wrap it up and you come back to America, empty-handed. Oh yeah, 
He said everything is activated. He's leaving now. He's leaving now. I'll have him go and pick him up. On the other hand, if you're gonna stay, 57,000 people who are ready to kill you, you have to be responsible for people, your team, your employees' lives. So I'm just away 1.6 kilometers to pick up Messi. I just start running. I run for almost a mile. Okay, so here is Messi. Oh, fuck. It's just gonna be a few minutes till so, uh, cockroach, smoke, and just rats are gonna come out. We refuse to come home empty-handed. We refuse to let other teammates down. You're a fucking god, man. Oh my god. <laughs> yes, it's happening. It's fucking happening! It's happening! It, the roach is on the ground, on the bottom. Yeah. It's happened. Oh, Look! He's holding. Rats, oh, rats, 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 rats. Oh! Not only pranking them with glitter bombs and cockroaches and various other devices, but also making them aware that we are inside watching everything that they're doing and we were able to shut down multiple call centers for multiple weeks. It accounted for potentially tens of millions of dollars that was saved from otherwise would have been scam victims. Surprise, surprise, scammers. Trilogy Media in the house. Uh, we are addressing all 57,000 members. We've also downloaded every single person's contact information. We're submitting it to the FBI in the United States and the CBI here in India. You better stop scamming people. We're watching everything that you're doing and we are inside of way more than you can even possibly imagine. More surprises coming, just, oh. just wait. Good just luck. Wait. Good luck. It definitely feels reckless. It feels maybe sometimes way too risky. We're interrupting multi-million dollar industries all over the world that are stealing billions of dollars from people. So the risks get higher every single time. My wife, she said, it's easy to sleep for me not knowing how dangerous it is for you because after everything happened to us in India, she, she, she took it very like, why would you put yourself, like, why are you doing these? Why are car chases some of the most watched things on television? It's because it's unpredictable. Something bad could happen at any moment. Going to kill him. I refuse to say that we do this for entertainment. We're not intentionally putting ourselves in a more dangerous situation. I'm not doing this for likes, clicks, comments. It's, it's, it will be stupid to do this for entertainment. We get challenged all the time about fucking everything we do. Uh, that's just that's just the nature of, of doing basically anything online. We're not Batman going after a particular bad guy. We're just the ones that are willing to jump in, feet first, head first, whatever, peel the onions, the layers of the onion apart, and see what happens. And we document it, and that was, in a weird way, our dream all along.